Hey, I want to do this little intro for my interview with uh, Alex Sonkin. This was Alex is a brilliant guy. All right. So and I wanted I want to set this up. So Alex is the founder of the Due Diligence Project and the Virtual Family Office. And what his organization does supports um and and gets an organization that vets and works with like family office, like ultra uh high net worth business owners the family office means you have so much money you don't invest retail and you have your own team of advisors and what's telling is that you know one of the main things they focus on is um tax mitigation you know and so he organizes brilliant tax strategist cpas primarily and uh tax attorneys to these people and gets them all together and gets the best of the best and and basically provides a it's not a library but basically a hub you vet them you have to be part of it but so i just want you to understand where he's coming from now most of y'all won't be the, the the clients but what i want you to pay attention to as you hear this is the thought process and some of the things where we talk about tax and insurance and i want you to see guys success leaves clues because what you'll see is that or the question you got to ask yourself can some of these things apply to me at my level and the answer is yes if you pay attention all right good. another episode of the practical wealth show and so i have a great guest today we're going to talk about this kid of tax planning due diligence and how elite cpa firms bring massive value to their most important clients well there he just said it okay so what we're going to do is is we're basically going to talk about elite tax strategy and how uh his firm and and, and how they bring value to uh, strategic value to family offices, to elite level business owners. And we're going to share some of these best practices with you. Alex, welcome to the Practical Well Show. Thanks, Curtis. Pleasure being here. Tell them what I didn't tell them. Okay. And um, and then I want to ask you how you got started in, in tax and finance. Yes. Yeah, so what we do is we have a very large independent peer review community of CPA firms. Uh, around the country. We had 847 CPA firms participate in our 2020 due diligence project summit that we do every single year. Um, our community has over 10 members who are former partners with the big four, KPMG, Deloitte, Pricewaterhouse, Arthur Anderson, back when it was called Arthur Anderson. And what we do is we do independent peer review uh, on sophisticated tax strategies. And the reason this is important is most people don't know how many and most CPA firms and law firms have no idea how many pages there are in the tax code. In fact, we don't know any CPA or tax attorney that it can even round the tax code to the nearest 50,000 pages. Is it, is it 500,000 pages long? Is it a million pages long? Is it 700,000 pages long? No one seems to know because it's constantly changing and they're adding new strategies, new language to this every year. What's interesting is that when you look at, you know, you hear about how Bezos doesn't pay taxes, there's billionaires who don't pay taxes. When we look at the real numbers, 18% of Fortune 500 companies are able to zero out their tax returns. Mm -hmm. 82%, which is really crazy because 82% of the most profitable, most, most highest revenue generating companies in the world, they don't know how to do this. They have ability to hire the best CPA firms, the best law firms, the best tax attorneys. But when we look at their, their, uh, their, um, basically their, their tax structure, it's very inefficient. Their tax return should be pristine, but it's not, it's not even average looking. It's not good. It's well below average, meaning they're incredibly good at creating wealth, creating income, creating, income. Mm -hmm. 
income and revenue, but then keeping that income is really where four out of five Fortune 500 companies fails. And when we look at multi-billionaire family offices, centimillionaire family offices, it's it's even worse. You know, we're talking one out of six multi-billionaire family offices we would look at and say they're tax efficient. That means five out of six are not. And so what's the disconnect? You know, these people can hire the best CPAs. They can hire the best attorneys. Why are they doing so poorly mm -hmm. in tax planning relative to the Bezoses and the Zuckerbergs of the world? Here's the answer. Their CPA firms have no clue how many pages there are in a tax code. Mm -hmm. They, they're, they're, when, when they say they're doing due diligence and sophisticated tax planning, it's really, you know, from our perspective, their due diligence is not what we would call world-class due diligence. Here's the challenge. They, they don't have enough time. They don't know who to call. They don't know where the thought leaders are. They don't know who the specialists are in all these areas. Yep. And so the easiest thing for them to do is just pay your tax. Let's use traditional planning strategies that we've already been, that we've learned over the last you know, 20, 30, 40 years. But how many strategies are there in the tax code and how many pages are there in the tax code? So what we've done is we've decided we're going to build the largest independent peer review community of tax geeks in the world. And who are these tax geeks? They're the ones who have to sign the tax returns or they're the ones who come up with the tax strategies like a very, uh, like a really bright tax attorney. Mm -hmm. so our community is like 99.5% CPA, tax focused CPAs, and maybe 0.5% elite tax attorneys. And what we do is we just eat this tax code you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. Everyone's introducing their favorite resources, their favorite strategies, kind of like Amazon and Netflix are using mm -hmm. independent peer review, like you watch a movie. You know, it's not like back in the Blockbuster days where you go to Blockbuster and you're flipping back those covers with right, your wife right. or your girlfriend going, I wonder if we're going to like this movie. I have no idea, honey. Let's ask the guy behind the counter. Hey, have you ever seen this movie? I, yeah, I've seen that movie. That's pretty good. And you start talking to people in the aisles. What's happening at that blockbuster? They're doing their own independent peer review, but they're really asking like four, five, six people. Right. Now, is that going to give them a good answer whether they're going to enjoy the movie or not? It, it's going to be better than not asking anybody. But what we're doing is we're showing sophisticated tax strategies to hundreds of independent CPA firms. And we're allowing the top CPA firms, the top law firms, especially firms, family offices, introduce their favorite attorneys, favorite resources. And then what we're doing, we're doing the same thing that Amazon and Netflix does. We are ranking and rating all the strategies, mm -hmm. all the movies in the, you know, we, we don't offer movies and books. We have sophisticated tax strategies. And we don't care what the majority of people have to say about the strategies. We don't care. What we care about is what do tax focused CPAs who have at least 10,000, hopefully over 50,000 hours of experience in audit and tax court have to say about these strategies because they have a different way of looking at tax strategies than let's just say financial advisors or estate planning attorneys who may have very little experience in audit or tax court. And their job is not to promote and sell sophisticated tax planning. Their job is to stay in their lanes and do what they do. And of course, you know, when a, when a successful business owner has a question about sophisticated tax planning, they're going to ask any financial person they know because they think they know more than about finance and tax as part of that right. finance field. Right. But really, where they need to go is they need to go to a CPA who's plugged into an independent peer review network like the Due Diligence Project, yep. Richard Family Office Hub. Say, have you ever heard of this? And that CPA may or may not have, but they can plug in and access notes on all the strategies that we've been doing due diligence on for the last 15 plus years, and then review those notes, go into the tax code, communicate with the specialist or thought leader in that space, communicate with other CPA firms that have already completed their due diligence on it. And guess what happens? They're going to complete their due diligence on this tax strategy in 10 times less time with 10 times more confidence and then bring actual really good information and answers to their client who's going, you know, what am I looking at here? Am I going to go to jail? Is this going to be an audit? Mm -hmm. Should we just pay the tax? That's brilliant. I mean, because the, the tax, we teach our clients, tax is your number one wealth transfer. Transfer meaning leaving your asset column, going to your treasury department or leave, if it's leaving your asset column to another, but 
the other side of that, it's shocking. The number you just told me that these big companies that can afford it are transferring this kind of wealth away because, see, one of the things we add on to that, Alex, is the opportunity cost. So it's not just the money. If you pay a tax, you didn't have to pay. It's not just that check. It's that check with opportunity cost spiraling out into the future. So it flows into tens of millions of dollars of lost money because you didn't get good advice. Because a lot of people now, at even at your level, is shocking because it's most people are they're what I call a tax preparers. They're not really tax planners. That's correct. And um, be, just because they don't have time, they're trying to get this done. They don't have time. They don't have time to, to do the really the work of if there's. Um, and that's and that's by design. You yeah. know, that's by design. I think the IRS, what the IRS is doing, right, they stretch their CPA so thin, meaning there how many deadlines do CPA firms have? We just concluded their first you know, deadline of the year, right? But they have deadlines throughout the year. So they have they have deadlines for personal taxes, corporate taxes, trust, right? Trust is different. Then there's extension. Then there's, you know, so they have very little time for themselves, for their families, and for proactive tax planning and to complete due diligence. So they're so the government's got them spread so thin. Their clients need tax returns, they need financial statements, they need all these things. But what right, they right. really want is the tax planning ideas and the due diligence on this and the cpas just don't have the time they don't have the resource they don't know don't know where to go and even if they're working for big firms those big firms have a bunch of w2 employees right. that big firm is a part of another association of other big firms with other w2 employees they're not really doing independent peer review due diligence okay they're not doing it and we know they're not doing it because when they're one of their senior partners comes in and says, hey, I've got this new idea. What, you know, let's let's promote this new idea. If you're a middle manager or an employee as a CPA for that firm, you're not going to raise your hand and be like, hey, I think that idea sucks. I think we're all going to go to jail because this idea is going to, you know, there's a lot of problems with this. Right, you right. Know, that, that's going to cost audits because there may be an employee for this firm and they don't want to make this tax partner look bad. Right. We so, don't want audits. Is that why you say that traditional model for attorneys, advisors, accountants working together is not working? It's not working. It's not working for a million reasons. And one of those reasons is there's really no team based approach. Everyone is protecting themselves. The CPA, you know, what what do attorneys really want to do? They really want to protect themselves and their fight. Right. You ask an attorney a question you know, can I do this? They're like, no, because legally, but if you ask an attorney, how do I do this? Right. How can oh, I do this? That's right. They're going to give you a completely different answer. <laughs> right. 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 You know, versus can you do this? Cause they legally have to say, no, you cannot do this the way you ask that question. But how do, Oh, how do you do it? Oh, it's super simple. Right. That's all it took. People never say, can I? I always start with, uh, how can I? And Oh, you know, well, there's, there's 15 different ways to do that. <laughs> yes. But if you ask them, how do you, Oh, no. You can't do that. You're going to go to jail if you do that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to do that. And they really should be talking like, so when, for example, with, when people create an entity, it's part, it's the tax side and then there's the asset protection side. And you really need to have your attorney and your accountant talking like on board with each other. Well, you know, that's, that's the other problem is mm -hmm. here's the thing, you know, we're both in the finance field. I came, you know, I, I, I was a graduate graduating university of Michigan business school. I actually started as an options trader. So I started in finance and somehow miraculously after spending a decade over a decade, making markets, being a member of the Chicago Board of Trade and Market and the CBOE, I got brought into the family office on the tax side and really start, you know, have 15 years working with CPA firms on sophisticated tax planning. Most people in finance don't have tax planning backgrounds. It's like most people don't have engineering backgrounds and they don't have CPA tax planning backgrounds because those are very, very technical areas. So we find that, C, you know, if you start with that tax background, you can easily learn finance and get up to speed and then still but then there's some sophisticated stru structures like life insurance for instance that's more complicated there's lots of moving parts so the real thing with with financial planning is you need to have an elite tax 
advisor that's that's really fluent in the center there, mm -hmm. supported by elite financial professionals who are really, really good at all those other areas of finance on the lending side, on the M&A side, on, on the life insurance side, because all that knowledge needs to come together for a client to really, really win. And when and typically where they lose is they have a lot of strong financial people or maybe not that strong, but their, their CPA does not have access to all these ideas. They have not done due diligence on hundreds of tax strategies that are, that are out there. Uh, and, and, that, and so all of a sudden now they're really missing the boat. Instead of starting with maybe three, four, five different opportunities to eliminate tax and create tremendous ROI, by not knowing those opportunities, all of a sudden now we're going to pay the tax. Right. And now we're left with after-tax dollars, and let's plan with that. Or, or they defer the tax. Like the basic go-to is let's let's max out, let's put some money in a SEP. You know, we tell people, look, if people write a fifty thousand dollar check, just so it's small business people to to not pay a ten thousand dollar check, and so they're deferring, or the more accurate word is postponing the tax. And that's exactly. like basic go-to. You know, and then you have to think. Then you have to think, Curtis. Who created the tax code? Who wrote it? And who created this tax strategy? Like who mm -hmm. created the SEP IRA? Who created, who created, uh, you know, the charitable remainder trust, family and partnerships, grants, class, who, those are attorneys who are paid by who? Not your client, Curtis. They're not being paid by business owners. They're being paid by the government. They're being paid by the IRS. So when you put money in a SEP IRA in a qualified plan, when that account doubles in value, all of a sudden your tax liability doubles in value. Yes. <laughs> and now you owe more. So who designed this plan? Attorneys working for the government, they're making money on your money, growing and doubling and tripling the tax liability that you started with. So you really have to kind of look at and this. That's like, typical advice. I was just on this podcast yesterday where I was, and I was like, listen, typical advice is bad for business owners because all they're doing is, you know, they're doing what they know, they're covering their butt, and it really kind of partners with the government. Because what you're really doing is qualified plans, you're really in partnership with the government. So you see $5 million in your qualified plan, but I say, like, take 30, 40% of that off the top because that's your partner's money. Well, the real problem is this. The real problem is when you, if you successfully do everything that they've told you to do and you're seven years old, you should be in the highest tax bracket of your life. Now, the, the hidden killer yes. of these qualified plans, there's really two hidden killers. One is ta taxes. What are taxes going to be in the future? We have no idea and we have no control. They could raise those tax to 100% of income and we're all screwed, right? The other one is inflation. If it's costing you today, you know, if a gallon of milk costs whatever $5 today and it costs you $30 in 15 years, and you've been counting on this qualified plan, and all of a sudden 15 years go by and you have to pull out three times as much money out of your qualified plans as your current cost of living, yes. what tax bracket are you going to be in as you start depleting your qualified plan? Just by inflation alone, you're going to be in a much higher right. It's not bracket. going to be lower, right? Because I mean, they think retirement's static. It's not static. You know, the, the the price are going up. It's really the value of the dollar going down, <laughs> okay? But, you know. Right. So, and then people are, okay, well, let's use a Roth. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Let's use a Roth. You know, we see situations that are unusual. Uh, we see 40-year-olds, for instance, with $40 million in their Roth plan. And this is you know coming from elite CPA mm -hmm. from service mm -hmm. elite clients. This is an unusual situation, right? Well, here's you know you would think, okay, I'm going to put all this money in Roth. I'm going to kill it in this Roth, and I'm good. No, you're not good. The guy has forty million dollars in his Roth. He cannot touch it until he's fifty nine and a half, right? Without taxes and penalties. So you plugging in a Roth, and let's say you have forty million in there, and you, and you see this opportunity. Hey, I want to use some of this money to do something else that money is not really yours. You have to pay penalties and, and taxes to get money out of a Roth plan that you already paid taxes to put into that Roth plan. So all these government sponsored plans have a lot of strings attached. You're partnering with someone that that's, isn't really looking out for you. Okay? Yeah. They're looking out for themselves. If you look at their situation with, with over $30 trillion in debt and where are they gonna get the money to pay that debt? 
in your pocket. That's right. They're going to raise taxes and pull the money out of your pocket because they control the rules, right? That's why I say, look, you could, or you can store it in a in a, in a joint account with the Treasury, or you can store sure in your capital in a free contract with other free people. So we tend to like to use life insurance for because sure. now it's that you can access it, you can collateralize it, you don't have to take it out by the whatever you want to do, and you leave a tax free uh, we, death we, benefit. We 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 took. Tur- you know, Curtis, we completely agree with you. We we really like cr- what we like to do when we look at a portfolio. Typically, we, we get business owners and their big, the biggest thing that we like to do is we like to look at their income tax. How do we eliminate their income tax? That's mm-hmm. number one, right? How, how do we create that cash flow for the business owner from income tax mitigation? Then we look at non-traditional strategies and and look at ways to create future growth in a a 99% tax-free environment. And then sometimes we complete these plans with high cash value life insurance that's being funded. We either, you know, we use either use 10, 15% of the taxes saved to finance it, or Mm -hmm. we have a bank finance the insurance, or we just buy the insurance policy because it's it's a leveraged way to take care of, of a new partner instead of paying the IRS. Or we do a deferral strategy where we use life insurance to take care of the IRS in the future, or we eliminate the IRS altogether, partner with a charity, create massive tax eliminations, use a tiny fraction of the taxes eliminated to finance an insurance policy, takes care of the charity, and we create arbitrage and create structures where clients can invest their money now 99% tax-free moving forward. But when we look at the life insurance piece of this, and this is kind of where your expertise is at, we look at this and say, look, we don't want to fund this with after-tax dollars. We'd like to fund this with pre-tax dollars, and we look at this asset class as a non-correlated asset class to the rest of your portfolio. So if you want to take risk, right, you're going to do it in private equity, you're right. going to do it in your business, you're going to do it in, in real estate. Let's create a structure for you where you can invest those funds 99% tax-free and then create a p- path for you to move all those assets out of your estate. But as we're using the life insurance piece, we're going, what if you, what if risk comes in? and risk hurts your business, it hurts your real estate, it hurts your private equity investments, hurts all these different investments you're making that are part of this risk bucket. We like to structure these high cash value insurance policies in a way that they're not correlated with business economic risk, all these different things. So if everything is crashing, you have a big pile of cash value, maybe it's sitting outside your estate and we bring back into your state if your state is collapsing because then your net worth is collapsing. If it's mm-hmm. not, we kind of leave it outside your estate and let it let it work itself and let that that magic work. So we really believe in all these pieces that we're working with, but we really like to put everything together and be really, really efficient on, on the income tax side, estate planning side, asset protection side, and the wealth building side, and really use this insurance as a completion of the plan or as a financial put option. Yeah. against all the risk that the business owner, because typically business owners are just like little boys. They just want to put everything in the risk button, bucket. Right. Let's go. No guts, no glory. Right, right, right. <laughs> We're going to take risk in, 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 in real estate. We're going to just keep going. I'm like, well, at, at a certain point, it's like you've made all this wealth. Let's take some of that off the table. Right. Yeah. And, and, Alice, and- what I tell them is that I'm their defensive coordinator, right? So offense is your job. Defense wins championships. So I want them to save. I want them to manage cash flow. I want them to have what we call maximum protection. I want them to have legacy, liquidity, and then velocity is all you know the stuff you're doing to make money. But you have to play defense, you know, 100%. and you got to eliminate wealth transfers. How, how people pay mortgages, we call it taxes, how they fund qualified plans, how they pay for college, how they pay for big ticket items. And one of the things that we talk about is that there's more opportunity in those like five or six things than there is trying to pick winning investments. So, well, absolutely. Know. And t- right, you know, the, the two areas right now, you know, a couple of years ago, there were lots of places that were very sexy, right? Real estate, sexy, stock market, sexy, crypto, sexy. You could throw money at anything and it's sexy. Why? Because the government's just printing, printing, printing money. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are pegged at zero right now. They've raised interest rates. Economy's collapsing. Everything is, you know, a lot of asset classes are just collapsing, but certain asset classes are not. And when we look at, you know, and we work with 
close to a thousand CPA firms out there. And, and they're not all members. We have hundreds and hundreds of members and we have hundreds of CPA firms that we work with. They're not members, but we, we see what's going on. The two areas where people are making money right now is if they're lucky enough to be making money in their businesses because their businesses work in this crazy economy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The other area where people are making money is tax strategies, just eliminating tax, just creating ROI. Instead of paying this much tax, I'm going to pay my tax advisor a small fee, eliminate that tax, and I'm going to have an immediate 600%, 700%, 800% ROI right now. So those are the two areas that we can be really focused on right now when everything is tricky and just like you said, play defense because everything else right now is if you're not playing defense, you're getting hurt somewhere. Right. Because not losing is winning. OK, but but because we teach like the well, I call the three rules of investing, invest in what you know, your business, right? Invest in what you or invest in knowing. OK, invest in what you could control or influence the outcome of don't chase returns, right? Yeah. And so now you can control what, see what's fascinating. So I wanna bring this, this is so awesome, uh, uh, Alex, you're appreciative to the choir here. And my head's about to explode with all these questions. I know we're, our time is short, but the, the I wanna kind of bring this down cause like you're working with higher, uh, you know, ultra successful network. I work with a lot of business owners, but they're not quite like that, but it's still fascinating. 82% of the fortune 500 companies do their taxes wrong. So that tells me what about everybody else? Oh, it's, uh, it's terrible. I mean, the thing is, and the thing is the CPAs out there, they actually have a heart for this. They know, they know their clients want tax strategies. They know they want due diligence. They want to give it to them. They CPAs actually want to provide this. They're just limited. And, and, and that's, and that's, who, that's who our clients are is really yeah. those CPAs. And so for your audience, look, we have access to hundreds of strategies and many of our clients, you know, even clients making three, $400,000 a year, which is a lot of money, but you know, if that's kind of on a low side for our client base, yeah, yeah. there are still things for those clients to do to minimize and cut their tax in half uh, and minimize those taxes that are non-traditional strategies that our CPAs have, and they are able to bring that value to the table. And so these strategies work for people making $300,000 a year to $300 million a year. Um, obviously, there are strategies at a million dollars a year and up that are really, really cool, really sophisticated, where there, there's some minimum fees involved. Yeah. And you need to have that type of income and you need to have that type of tax liability to justify paying those fees to get the ROI down. Um, and then below that, there's a, there's other strategies, maybe maybe slightly lower value, but there's things that are still way better than the stuff that the IRS is giving us as traditional tax planning, which doesn't really. Yes, I, here's the thing. So what you you're hitting on what I have been thinking about, uh, which is how to. What I've wanted to do is kind of create a family off like I always, you know, Kiyosaki says investing is a team sport. And so what I've been looking to do is attract people. So it's not a family office per se, because, you know, I'm dealing with smaller people, but I can help kind of help them build their advisory team. So at least that we're right. on the same page. Any suggestions on well, how to do that yes. or how what that would look like? Yeah. You know what? Yes. And this is part of what we do. You know, um, we build teams, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been building, I've been building teams for a long time. And, and the, the key piece of these teams is supporting the tax advisor, right? So we believe the tax advisor should be the quarterback or partnered with a financial person to be the quarterback of that business owner. Mm -hmm. And so someone like you needs to be part of that team, but What's really valuable is plugging that CPA firm into an independent peer review community like the due diligence project and and basically taking that due diligence role off the CPA, allow him to reduce the time it takes for them to complete their due diligence by 10 times and give them 10 times more confidence when they bring these ideas to the table. So now they have the tax planning piece. They, and then they, they're going to need a partner to actually do the financial planning. So we've got, obviously, the due diligence project has access to 
world-class advisors, insurance people, all these different resources. But when a CPA comes in when they're with their own team of people, we let their team of people handle those pieces and we just work with the CPA on the tax advisory stuff and the due diligence pieces and we bring in the high power tax attorneys and the structures and those those pieces so that's really what you do is is the key is you take those cpas introduce them to due diligence project virtual family office hub and then we support that cpa firm and their clients and their favorite in, internal advisors mm -hmm. and then we and then we build out the rest of that family office which we call the you know, virtual yeah. family office mm -hmm. the virtual family office hub is there to give access to elite CPAs and family offices to elite advisors, elite specialists, elite right. thought leaders who've already been vetted out by hundreds of other elite CPAs and family offices, which creates a lot of confidence. So what CPAs and family offices are very scared of is introducing outside resources to their clients who have not been vetted, who are potentially huge problems you know, audits, tax court, lose, you know, all sorts of issues mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. have their own goals, are not team-based. They're like, I'm Superman, I'm gonna steal all your clients. So in our model, that's not gonna happen. The specialists come in, they're vetted, they see the, the virtual family office hub, we're the client, and ultimately the CPAs that are part of our network, they're need, they need to make them look good. So all the specialists are there to make our CPAs look good, mm -hmm. and they work for, the CPAs that we that we introduce them to to make them look good, and their job is to make the, the due diligence project, virtual family office hub, look good. So we're essentially like the Amazon yeah, intermediary yeah. between the CPAs, the family office that support elite business owners, and all the strategists, resources, tax attorneys, specialists who want to bring their value to these high net worth businesses. And they have, you know, you have to want to be. You have to be humble, as I say, the CPA and willing to learn, you know, and to know you don't know everything. You know, I always always tell people, I always try to go to places where I, Curtis is the dumbest person in the room, right? Because I'm always trying to stretch myself. And yeah. you've just said a bunch of stuff I knew bits and pieces of, especially around the life insurance. And but, you know, what you want to do is you've got to surround yourself because with brilliant people. And that brings you with them. But in you because what you want to do, if I look at it from my standpoint, I, because even if they're in business and they're not like family office material, there's still a lot of money on the money on the table that you're giving away. And now one, here's a clue. <laughs> there's two tax codes, right? Just as bringing it back down, there's one for W2 people, which is not a whole lot you can do. I mean, it's probably some stuff, but it's really, if you go to Rock Kiyosaki's thing, the BI triangle, all of your people your advisors are people that are working with people on the business owner investor side if, of the game. if they're if they're high w2 earners there are a lot of things we can do they're just non-traditional strategies now the traditional strategies don't work for w2 right right but we have a lot of strategies that work extremely well for w2s the challenge with w2 people is they need to jump out of their box right they're living yeah. in a box they're going yeah. i like working for my boss right there is a is a problem right what the hell are you doing? You're working for a boss. That is not, but let's just say you've got a great job. You have a huge income. We need to open your mind. We need to say, look, the company you work for, the head of the, you know, look at what the top people are doing. Look at what one, the, the one out of five billionaires that zeroing out their tax returns. Let's just, why don't we just do what they're doing? Yes. Why are we recreating the wheel? Why are we modeling people who are completely tax inefficient and doing what they're doing. Let's model the best people in the world. You know, you go to any sport, look at, look at Kobe Bryant. What did he do? He just sat there. He's like, I'm going to tie my shoes like Michael Jordan. I'm going to brush my teeth like Michael Jordan. I'm going to let if, if Michael Jordan goes to the bathroom, I'm going to go to the bathroom just like Michael Jordan. Boy, right. My, my, my butt right. like Michael Jordan. That's right. And guess what? And he almost got there. He wanted to get five rings. Yep. Just model the best. Why are we modeling like not the best? It's just such a simple idea. So you want to be the best? Okay, model Fortune 500 companies, but model the one out of five that's zeroing out their tax return. Don't model the four out of five that are paying way, way out their nose in tax return. How do you, that's, I mean, that's good. We tell people, look, success these clues and, you know, study, you know, what because all the successful people do the opposite of all the typical buy and hold, dollar cost average, buy term, they don't do any of that stuff, right? No. But how do you, you 
see that? And then how can you, what either, what are you reading? What are you watching? How do you see that? Cause it's kind of, it's there, but it's unseen. Like you how do you get no, to you look? Can't, there's, you can't see it. Look, you have to experience it. It's, okay. it's one of those things that, you know, I'm one of those business owners that just jumps in. You have to take action, right? Mm -hmm. Without action, you, you know, I'm an experiential learner. So I didn't even realize any of this was going on until we started putting on events for CPAs, bringing advisors, specialists, tax attorneys in the room, and then watching these elite CPAs communicate with these elite attorneys. And what we realized was all these amazing CPAs actually knew very little about what's actually out there. They knew like 10% of all these sophisticated strategies that, were, that we were seeing, they just never saw them before. Right. We're going, wait a minute, we thought CPAs knew everything. And then we realized they don't know anything because they're being asked to study a document. I mean, have you ever read the tax code? Your <laughs> clients should all go Google the US tax code right now and just start reading this thing and be like, what the hell am I reading? Oh, you can do this, 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 and this, unless this happens. And then this happens, then you can't do this, but you can do this under these 75 conditions. But if that condition happens and you can't do this, then you're going to go to jail. But if it's, but if the weather outside is like this, then you can absolutely do that unless this happens. And you're going, wait, does someone actually understand this? Is this CPA's job is to understand that, but every page, every paragraph is like that. Wow. So CPAs need help to do this. They do this as a community and they want to work with other CPAs. And of course you want to work with the top, top, top CPAs who are so curious. You know, you said the word curious, right? Super important. They're curious, they're humble, they're hardworking. And that might be the smartest CPA you'll ever meet. And that, that guy might know more of the tax code than any CPA you'll ever meet. But if you ask him, do you know the tax code? Be like, no, I have no clue what's in the tax code. Mm -hmm. I do know a couple sections pretty well. That's a dangerous dude right there. That's mm. a really good CPA. Okay. You ask a, you ask a somewhat financial person, to, hey, you know the tax code? Oh, yeah, we're really, really good with tax. Whoa. You know, do you know the whole tax code? The answer is no. That's the answer. No one knows the tax code. You cannot know the tax code. Nobody knows the tax code. And so this humility, this, this curiosity, all of those are part of it. But then as you get into it as a CPA, some of these guys, they know they're the best, but they're still humble. You know right. what I mean? Right. They're like, right. I'm humble. I don't know anything. But if you really go ask them, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, they're like, I'm probably one of the better CPAs those are the best cpas in the country they're constantly learning because the tax code's constantly changing right as soon as they think they know it new tax code you know new law comes in so the the power of our community having hundreds and hundreds of cpas and all the cpas they have their own networks so yeah. anytime something changes we're all notified i'm notified new ideas come in we're notified we're doing the due diligence we're constantly doing due diligence is this going to change you know, do we have now a better specialist in that area? When we see a situation with a highly appreciated asset sale or this, 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 you know, where, where, what are our go-tos? What are our one, two, three, four, five, six go-tos? If we find a new strategy, is that going to replace number one? Or is that going to number three or number four? So we're constantly evaluating ROI, net of cost, net of risk, and then marrying those strategies with a specific fact pattern because everyone's got a different situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, as we close, I appreciate your time today. I, so one selfish question for me, okay? And then I want you to tell them not how to follow what you're doing, but it seems like they should be referring their CPA to you is really your customer. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's exactly right. Because at the end of the day, the business owner is going to love what we do, mm -hmm. but they're not going to understand what we do. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, their, their first question, if they're smart, go, go, Hey, go to their CPA and go like, what the hell is this? Am I going to go, is this, what's going to happen in audit? Is there going to be an audit? Is there going to be you know, tax court? I don't want any issues. I, I've got, so they love the benefits of what we're doing, but they, and we can certainly explain this to them, but really their CPA is the one that's signing the tax return. Their CPA is the one that's going to look at what we're doing, go, wow, that is amazing. Or I need more information, or this looks really, really good, but I need to speak with a specialist or I've got these questions or I've never seen this before. 
you know, my, my due diligence process is, you know, it's a three month process. Okay, great. Let's go. Let's start the process. You know, your clients need these answers. We're here to provide you with the ability. to Because, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm saying that because I find, listen, I got to, I think about this stuff all the time. Right. And I find I got to bring it up to the, you know, to the person. Cause I'm curious, I'm listening to, I'm podcasts, I'm going to conferences and how can you do this? How do you do this? So does it start with me first it, or does it, it starts? It starts with, look, it starts with the, the business owner. Yes, the business okay. owner has to be motivated mm -hmm. and the business owner has to know that there are answers out there and mm -hmm. their CPA and their advisors are doing the best that they can. Right. Mm -hmm. This is not like, Oh, we have better advisors than your advisor. You know, we're better. Than, no, it's right. just we're, we we have to do this as a community. Yeah, and we build these teams, right? And so we really like to build infrastructure underneath the most trusted tax advisor, so that that tax advisor completes the due diligence, gets confident, and then brings these answers to their client because that's really what the client really wants. They don't actually want to understand how the airplane is going to take them to Maui, right? They right. want to land in Maui. They want to have that drink, right. put the bikini, you know, forget their problems. Right. Their kids right. are at home. Honey, right. we're going to be in the pool. You know, we're, what time is it? What day is it? Let's go. Right. Well, let me explain right. to you how the plane works. No. Right. I just want to know what time it is. I don't even know how the clock works or how to watch work. I want right. my CPA to know yeah. that, hey, if we do this, 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 and this, there's not going to be any issues in audit. There's going to be not issues. I want my CPA to complete their due diligence. Yeah. And if I and if this is a big enough situation, I may say I want my CPA, my, my attorney, I want all my favorite people to really understand this, even, even though, you know, their CPA may be the only one who really figures this out. But we educate we typically in such certain situations, we'll educate the whole group of advisors around that client because they might want that warm and fuzzy. And that's what we do. So the that. key is to have access to an independent peer review community where you can actually complete the due diligence and get some confidence because outside of that, most people don't want to look bad. They don't want to look dumb and they don't have a facility to complete this due diligence. It's literally like showing up at Blockbuster and you and going, Hey, and, and someone in there is like, no, I'm the, I'm the top movie reviewer in the world. And, and you, what do you think of this movie? Well, I've never saw the movie before. Well, what, well, what do you really, you know, what do you, do you think it's going to be good or not? Um, it's, it's probably going to be good. Have you ever seen it? No, I've never seen it. But, you know, it's like you don't want to be in that situation, right? right, right. When you're the expert and you really don't know the answer. Because really your, your answer should be, I really don't know. But what a lot of experts, quote unquote, will say is be like, you know, there's probably problems with this. You, you, you hopefully you don't go to jail. I'm, I'm not comfortable with this. Why aren't you comfortable with this? Because I've never studied it. Right. Because right. I'm an idiot. Is really the answer. I, I I I don't understand this. I've never seen this before. I am humble enough to tell you I have no clue what this is. You need to talk to someone who's an actual expert in this area. How refreshing would it be for a financial professional to, to say that? For a CPA or an attorney to be like, I have no clue, no clue what this is. The tax code's way too big for me to understand. Yeah. No, but they give you these different answers. Like, well, hopefully you don't go to jail. This sounds really risky to me. Right. I will tell people in the market, I don't know, but I can get the, I, I you just got to be able to see, there's nothing wrong with not knowing. Absolutely not. But I don't you know just be able stuff. to get the answer. Like I can get right. the answer in two or three phone calls, you know, by somebody. And I always have a lifeline. It's like who wants to be a millionaire? I have my lifelines to even double check to make sure my thinking's right. You well, know, that, that's a humble, that's, that's that humble attitude that really successful business owners, they get that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, they know they know what to look for. They know they want that humble person that's that's probably the, the quietest, most humble. The guy who keeps his mouth shut in the room may very well be the smartest guy in that room. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. what I mean. So this is what was going on, and the people who are the loudest, who have all these opinions, and this is what's hilarious is is we do these meetings, right? And we have people come in and they're going, "Oh, let me tell you why the strategy is bad," and we're like. You know, we know they have literally zero experience in audit, mm -hmm. zero experience in tax court. And all they did was Google something on the Internet mm -hmm. and get. And I'm like, you know, that the real knowledge about sophisticated tax, but you're not going to find any of this on the Internet. It's just not on the Internet. OK, you're not going to find it there. 
you so you know if you're telling me that your due diligence consists of googling articles from financial publications about tax strategy i mean that's embarrassing that is not how you do it that is not how elite family offices and elite fortune 500 companies do their tax plan so that is just shows you and, and that that person you know in order to be a master of something right you have to have at least ten thousand hours of experience in that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. So you have 10,000 hours, maybe 100,000 hours of experience in your area of expertise. To have 10,000 hours of experience in audit, in tax court, you actually, you have to be a CPA or a tax attorney that is in that environment. Right. So that's where our community really relies on tax-focused CPAs to be the ones who vote and ask their questions, get their questions answered. That's why when we really look at sophisticated tax planning, the advice no offense of financial advisors, state planning attorneys, unless they have that experience in audit and tax court, it's meaningless. You may as well ask your plumber what he thinks. Right, exactly. You know? So everyone needs to stay in their lane. And, and if, they, if you don't know, I, I'm telling you, you nailed something earlier. I tell clients, I, they ask me questions that I don't know the answer to all the time. And I'm like, I don't know. But, I, but I, dirt, I definitely have the community to find the answer. I mean, right. I can find all these right. answers. That's what you need to do. It's like the it's like two things. How can I is ask the right question and then have somebody that's willing to you know get you the answers and show you why? Or it's like what I'm hearing. So because I want you to tell them how to who should get in touch with you and um um how how should they follow your you know your organization what you're doing and who should be talking well, touch well, we're, 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 yeah, so Curtis we're running out of time. I got to jump yeah. here, but if you want more information due diligence project.com info at due diligence project.com. It's been a great time. We went over an hour with you. I'm late to another meeting. I'm but so I sorry. really yep. enjoyed our time. With you, Chris. Me too. Listen, thank you so much. We'll get in the show notes and uh, we will talk to you soon. Alex, thank you again. Thanks. Chris.